What's up, my wizards? Dev from SBMTG here with... And I'm Tony. Yeah, that's his name. And we're going to do Red today in our ongoing set review for Battle for Zendikar. Red is not the most inspiring color in the set, I would say, but it does have some interesting pieces. So let's go ahead and hit it. Uh, starting off, we've got Dragon Master Outcast. And uh, <laughs> it's a nice reprint. Yeah, good it reprint. Was, it was good before. It'll be good again. I'm not sure what in. It's got potential. It's one of the better red cards in the entire set, I would mm -hmm. say. So, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited, actually, for the card. And it's not the best thing ever. But it has been. It's gotten it's steam, standard play before. So, we'll probably do it again. Up next is a Coem Firebird, which is bad. <laughs> pretty sure the card is bad. Um, I, I did play a one-up for a while on the Landfall thing I was building. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, really, it's just not great. I'm sorry. So. Uh, since it has to attack each turn of Able and everything else, I would rather just run the three mana one that yeah. is Ferocious. Ferocious, that, that seems like way better. Yeah. I'll way better. It. Like, if you have six mana to get him out of the graveyard, you probably got a four power creature. Yeah. So it's, I would just rather play that. Next up, we've got a Comb Hellkite. I yeah. think I'm pronouncing that right. A Comb? A Comb? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Whatever. It's uh, <laughs> um,. Definitely playable and limited, and I think there's standard potential yeah. somewhere, like, but at the same time, like, I'm not 100% sure where. Like, yeah. a lot of red dragons, or a green red dragons thing, yeah. because this is now a 6-drop, six, six drop. we've got a 4-drop in Thunderbreak, 6-drop in this, and 7-drop yeah. uh, in Atarka and whatnot, like, yeah. yeah. You know, we skip 5-drop, it sucks, but, like, this is not an acceptable replacement for Storm Breath. Exactly. At all, but... You know, I kicked myself a little bit for not playing this in the Landfall deck. During the video, I was like, well, we could probably play this card. Um, I have not tested with it. I think it's cool that you get, you know, incremental advantage, you know, almost, you know, every turn or every few turns off of this. You know, the damage to the face is pretty good. But is six mana for a 4-4 four, four fly really where we want to be? We've been kind of spoiled by with. these crazy dragons. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm not really feeling that one. <laughs> Up next is Retreat to Valakut, the red retreat, which is actually maybe my favorite retreat. Um, the problem is that, it, you know, in aggressive decks, we have to, again, sacrifice a turn to, to play, play this game. card, and I'm just, I'm not totally sold. Mm -hmm. I, I do love the whole, like, uh, one of their guys can't block. I think it's actually pretty good, you know, but I just, I don't think it slots into anything. No, not really. Uh, at the same time, though, in limited, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, there's a fine limited card, great. like most of the retreats. Yeah. The retreats are all, I think, good and limited, but, like, really not standard playable. Yeah, you know? we've got yeah, Zada... Hedron Grinder. Zada. And Zada. <laughs> Maybe one of the most, like, buzz-worthy cards of the entire set. Not a day goes by that someone in the comment section of some video isn't like, I want to see a Zada deck. And like, yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> yeah. This plus Defiant Strike just says draw all the cards. Draw all the cards! And like, Titan Strength, you know, you get all those scries and all your dudes get plus three, plus one. There's a million things. In the spoiler video, I actually listed, like, 30 cards that work yeah. with this, you know? Like, Tygum Strike is hilarious, you know? There's plus two plus seven, it's unblockable, rates. all your guys do, and it rebounds. So, like, there's a hundred things. They're really Do you Battle Rage to give everything yeah, a double strike? Yeah, Battle Rage, strike. everything has double strike, that's hilarious. Like, like there's, there's so many great things that can be done with it, but is it too fragile? Is it too slow? You know, there's there's a lot of things to take into consideration yeah, before we know if Zod is good. Yeah. So. But it might be, it might be stupid. And everyone's talking about Commander, you know, so... But I think it could see some standard play. It could see. We'll see. Up next is Radiant Flames, a card that I'm pretty sure will see standard play. Yes. Um, just sort of replaces Anger of the Gods. Not not a full replacement exactly. because it doesn't exile, but it is no problem to cast this card for three mana in for three different colors of mana in the standard that it is coming into. Right. So it's yeah. going to be fine. People talk about this in Grixis and in Jund even. Um, and I, I totally, especially see it in Grixis control. I, I could totally see that. But could you imagine if we saw the Anger of the Gods with all like the crazy exile tricks that okay. Eldrazi have? You know, you Anger of the Gods, and you've got like exile fuel for days. Yeah. But um, this, on the other hand, is still going to take out the majority of an aggro board. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in favor. I'm in favor of this. Uh, I actually tested with this in the uh, four and five color control type decks. Oh yeah. yeah. Because you can still put. I mean. You can usually always cast this for the three that way. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a nice early board wipe since we don't have, like, Bob Light, Drowned Sorrow. Yeah, we lose anger, a lot. 
like so many other low cost of board wipes. It's like the only out. good early board wipe now, you know, and it's it's good. I feel like it's good. Yeah, three. There's gonna be situations where you can cast this for just solid. the two different colors of mana, and it's still fine. And uh, that way, in like the gem decks and whatnot, your guys can survive and whatnot. Yep. Up next is a Comb Stonewalker, which is a bear. It's a two mana, two power guy, and uh, interesting landfall trigger for limited. Yeah, in landfall, yeah. in uh, this is your aggressive landfall deck. Yeah. Because uh, once you start playing out your creatures and whatnot, this gives you something to do with those landfall triggers. Yep. And it's. Awesome. Because yeah, it's pretty good. Because then you get like a 3-1, it has haste, and uh, you know, you're going to swing with it right away, and if it dies, you know, oh well, it was going to get exiled anyways. So yeah. Three powers usually enough to trade with plenty of creatures and whatnot. This is a fine limited card. Yeah, I think this is just where you want to be in limited. Yeah. Especially at two mana, they could have made this like a three mana guy, mm. and it would still be like, it'd be a common and not an uncommon. Yeah. But they could have done that, and so at two mana, this is where, this is a fine limited card, definitely. If you're building the landfall thing and you're drafting, it's not like first pickable or anything, but it'll probably come back around to you. So. Yeah. Next up, we've got Chasm Guide, and this is, you know, it's okay. It's uh, it's the key piece in the, uh, what is it, March from the Tomb, you know. Combo that everyone wants exactly. to see happen. But it's four mana, so that's half the mana that you can get back off. <laughs> I'm of so mad about that. So <laughs> it's not as good, it's not as relevant. Yep. But at the same time... You just want to be like a two mana one one or two, maybe a two mana two one. It yeah. gives all your allies haste or whatever, but that, that's, alas, it is not that. I mean, I would be fine with, like, a three-mana one that was just double red and yeah. one. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. It's like a two-two or something. You know, I just want it to cost less mana. That's, that's all I'll yeah. say. Because, you know, March from the Tomb is still a thing, and you can still make a pretty interesting combo. This is obviously the piece for that combo, but God, does it cost four mana. Yeah. But aside from the, the combo potential, you know, it's, again, a, probably a fine card in mm -hmm. limited. You know. All day. Uh, definitely for the uh, Boros ally deck. Yeah. It's really nice. All right, up next is Fire Mantle Mage. I may just be reading this for the first time, actually. I don't know that I noticed this card before. Um, just, I don't know, you've probably seen it more than I have. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've read this card plenty of times. Uh, having Menace on an ally like that is really good. Yeah, Menace is a good ability. Deck. Like, for oh. the limited ally deck, this is just awesome. Especially if you have the uh, <coughs> Lantern Scout. Yeah. That gives them lifelink and whatnot. Like, dropping this after you've done the haste, or the haste into this, or anything like that, like, all of that sort of has a nice stacky combo effect. Did you yeah. Say? That's the cool thing about allies, you know, is it just becomes this thing where, like, one ally comes into play and, like, all the things happen. Yeah. You know? So, that's it probably fine for the limited deck, but probably, probably nowhere other than that. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, if it was three power, I would consider it for standard, because then it's... Three mana, three, three power, power yeah. and all our guys get menace, that's fine. And I guess you can see in the March from the Tomb thing to sort of make those guys you just bring in um, evasive too. Yeah, like but part I, of the block. Still, meh, meh. Up next is Tunneling GOP, an interesting landfall card, and probably a good one for limited, but I wouldn't go so far as to play in the constructed landfall deck. I didn't, at least. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, I like the potential for it because that means uh, shock lands mean, uh, or uh, fetch lands mean. You take one damage and your opponent takes it's two. Two, yeah. So that's kind of cool. It's interesting. Yeah. We got Rolling Thunder, a nice reprint, and this is awesome. Oh, limited. limited. Yeah, this is insane in limited. <laughs> yeah, this is freaking amazing. In yeah, this is what you want. This is where you want to be in limited. <laughs> Aside from that, though, you're not going to play in constructive. We've got way better options in constructive yeah. magic. So. Yeah. Up next is Boiling Earth, and it's one of the more substandard, I think, awakened cards. I'm just. I'm not a big yeah. fan, you know. Uh, I can see it going in some boards, depending on how small the format is, but it's not going to be small. Well, so. even in limited, it's a great board tech, because if you do come across somebody that's very reliant on those uh, Eldrazi Scion tokens, yeah, that's the then thing. this busts all those up in yep. limited, and that's great. Yep. Uh, the only problem, so that means, you know, the Awakened Cost may not be something that you ever actually cast in limited. Yeah. Seven but, mana is so much. Yeah, but at the same time, if you do cast it for seven mana in limited. You know, you get a four four out of it, you bust up all their Eldrazi tokens. Yep. You might bust and up a few Eldrazi Scion tokens and get a guy, you know, that's sounds good, but it's not gonna happen all the time. It's exactly. really not, you know. It's and not only that, but uh like the late game seven mana thing for it and whatnot, just by that time in limited, they've used their scions. Yeah, their scions are probably gone, you know. Not only that, but if they're playing Eldrazi then like Sure, you'll put out a 4-4 on the Awaken, but they've got, like, way bigger dudes. Yeah. So. 
Up next is Belligerent Whiptail, yet another good limited creature. Red is fine and limited in the set, just don't see much constructive playability. Yeah. This is fine and limited, you know, four mana, four power. And when a four power creature gets first strike, it's pretty freaking good, honestly. Especially in limited. In limited, in limited. After that, we've got Lava Step Raider. And, I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I doubt it. I don't really like this in limited or standard yeah. or anything. You know, in limited, I don't really like one drops too much, like especially in sealed. And in this format, I really don't like one drops because we're getting. The format's going to be huge. Yeah. You know, like we're going to be playing a lot of really high mana cards, and one drops are just not going to be that important. Notice there aren't really that many one drop cards in the set to begin with. Yeah. You know, and this, I really wanted a good, you know, one mana cost goblin for standard. This ain't it. Yeah. You know, and we like mana sinks and limited, so that that is what that is. But uh, at the end of the day, I just think there's way better choices. You know, maybe a decent twenty third card, but it's not imperative that you play it. Mm -hmm. Up next is Goblin War Paint. I think it's it's neat. Uh, I think Goblin War Paint is just fine. Plus two, plus two, and haste yeah. to uh, like you know a four mana guy. There's plenty of four mana guys in red right now. So giving them plus two, plus two, and haste, haste. Yeah. is great. You know, even in like some constructed aggro variant, yeah. I could see this. You know, being able to drop a guy and swing with him on the same turn is important in a lot of aggro decks, especially budget aggro variants, where you're just trying to be as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, but they're a better option. Obviously, we still have Titan Strength in the format. There's Infectious Bloodlust, which is probably a better card. So, yeah. you know, I'm just I'm not seeing it right now. Next up, we've got Undo Champion, and uh, it'll be a nice potential thing for the ally deck. Yep. It's very solid that it gives trample to all your guys, but a lot of the allies are fairly small. Yeah. So, so the trample is kind of... You know, depending on what ally triggers you're getting, your dudes might get bigger, depending on like if you play another ally. Yeah. But like, this is cool. It's a warrior. It's an ally. And it will see no constructive play whatsoever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, we, in Limited we play, what is it, Summit Prowler? That's a good card. It's a four man. It's a two, two, two red and two colors for four three. We play that as a yeah. 23rd card in Limited. It's a fine card. So this card does exactly that plus value. Yeah. So that's we'll probably play it as again twenty to twenty third card. Yeah, exactly. Also, you hear the phrase twenty third card a lot when it when it pertains to limited. Mm -hmm. And I think we're actually gonna play an extra land in this format. Almost mm -hmm. every time. Now people so always say you know, sixteen to eighteen lands is where you want to be, but I could see playing nineteen lands in this format with all the huge stuff we're playing. So yeah. just wanna note that first. Next up is Outnumber, which is probably bad. Yeah. I would say. I mean, it looks like the tempting, but. It looks tempting. You know, we got tokens, decks, stuff like that, but I just, I still don't like that it only hits creatures. Yeah. You know? Vinted Players, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Vinted Players, it might be amazing. Next up, we've got uh, Reckless Cohort, and this is a fine limited card. Kind of love the creature types. Yeah. You know? Or your hand ally, but. Again, like like everything else in red so far, no standard play. <laughs> yeah, just not very... <laughs> Probably not. Up next is Scatter, Shatter Skull Recruit. And this is just, again, another... I think the rest of these red cards, you can save a couple, are just solid limited cards, which yeah. is what this is. Yeah. Very solid and limited. After that... Ooh, I just said that most of these <laughs> cards are bad. This yeah. might actually see some constructive. Maybe, maybe. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Sure Strike. And for a nice red combat trick, plus three, plus oh, and first strike, yeah, that's, that's really nice. That's so insane. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, you know, a Swiss Sphere can trade with a Rhino and not kill. Yep, yep. A Swiss Sphere can uh, kill a Rhino, actually. Yep. Yeah, kill first, a Rhino, not First trade. strike, not even trade, just kill the Rhino and not care. And that's, you know, it's, it's very, very early. Yeah. You know, this works defensively and offensively. You know, we do have Titan Strength in the format. There are other things. But this is... I love that this can work either way. Yeah. You know, just the plus three plus O is insane. Especially when you add first strike. So All that bad. might see some standard play. Up next is Stone Fury. This card is bad. <laughs> yeah. This card's bad. It's just bad. It's a bad card. You might play a one of for removal in limited, but it's just bad. It's a bad card. Yep. Next up we've got uh, Valakut Invoker. And uh, this is another limited maybe. Limited maybe. Limited maybe. Three mana, two, three. Okay. Limited is it's generally fine. okay and acceptable. It's generally acceptable. But the and late game mana sync on there is not bad. The late game mana sync is really good, I think. You know, three yeah. damage to a target every turn is okay. You know, you're not gonna hit it all the time. Yeah. But it's it's probably a fine limited inclusion. Yeah. Up next is volcanic upheaval, instant speed, land destruction, which we don't really get to see a whole lot of. That being said, I don't think we're gonna see any of this card. But <laughs> instant speed is really, really interesting on land destruction. Yeah, um, it's nice and limited because you can blow up their man lands. Yep, I mean you can do that in constructed too. It's just not worth the slot. Yeah, you, know? you could just kill 
the main land with uh, removal spell. Yep. And speaking of uh, finding limited, like most of these cards, this is Valakut Predator, which is pretty good for landfall decks in limited, but not constructed, I would mm -hmm. say. But in limited, yeah, you know, 4-4 four, four is fine. And some tricks you get a 6-6, six, six, that's not bad either, but again, no standard play. Yeah. Now, this one potentially has some standard play. Potentially. It's Kindy Slide Runner. Yep. Uh, two drop for your landfall deck. It's going to have trample, so uh, it's more likely to get damage through. Yep. And through uh, some of the landfall combat tricks that we've seen. Yeah. Then, yeah, all day. This yep. is so fine. Yep. The swell of growth is really interesting with this, as is the target's command, obviously. We can mm -hmm. use it defensively. And the trample is really good. The card would not be anywhere near as good as it is without the trample, because, you know, after a swell of growth, dropping a land, and you've already dropped your land for the turn, the card can get. Huge. The guy can get enormous, and you know, no matter what, he's going to deal a few damage in the early game. Yeah. So I could see him being a thing. Oh, this is a Serpentine Spike. I hate this card. Yeah. I, I really do. I hate this card. Uh, yeah, it just... Yeah. Nope. I don't even like him in Limited. Nope. If I, I pulled this in Limited, I would be very disappointed. Yeah, it's your rare. Yeah. It's your rare for that pack. I'd be so mad. Like, sure, it looks like it can kill a bunch of guys, and it can. It can, but it's 7 mana. I want 7 mana spells to say win the game. Yeah. All 7 mana spells should be Cruel Ultimatum. Up next is Barrage Tyrant, another fine limited card. And some people are saying constructed, uh, constructed. I'm not sure on that end. But, you know, you can fling nine power dudes at them. That sounds fine. Yeah. <laughs> so. It says get that damage through, you know, toss your old through for the last couple points of damage. In limited, that's great. Uh, and in limited, in, this is a game ender. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. In standard, this is a maybe because of that effect, but if it did see play like that, it would probably be as a one of. Yeah, yeah, you're not playing, you know, more than a couple of copies of this guy in anything, so... Um, I don't, I'm, I'm still not really seeing him. The five power for five, or five mana is probably fine. They pushed him a little bit, yeah. but I'm still not seeing too much standard playability on the guy. Although, again, I could be wrong, because, you know, you just end the game by flinging eight power at them. That yeah. seems good. Now we got Processor Assault, and me and Devin are both not a fan of this, but we think it's could be okay in limited where you yeah. can have a lot of different ways to set up for it that way. Exactly. You know, I just I hate that it's dead in your hand if you can't do the exile trick, you know? Yeah. And it's just it, this is the extra cost to like make roast hit creatures with flying. And it's just I don't I don't I'm not a big fan. In limited we'll have plenty of ways and even in constructed Eldrazi decks will have ways, but it's not worth it without it being like instant speed. If it was instant speed that'd be amazing, but I just I'm not a big fan. Not only that, the other problem is even in limited this can still have a hard time killing a lot of the Eldrazi. Yeah, it's so, true. Uh, this is a turn against. <laughs> so this costs a couple of more mana than your average Threaten or, you know, um, that active ability. Treason. Yeah, Active Treason ability. It costs a couple extra mana, but it's instant speed, which is interesting. We don't get to see that too often. And it uh, can, in this format, this limited environment, grab huge dudes. Yeah. And that, that's pretty important, too. So as usual, you play Active Treason <laughs> in your limited deck. Next up, we've got uh, Battle Aggregate and the uh, Card's Bad. Card's Bad. You know, we're talking about this, there's a, I think it's in Dragon's of Tarkir, there's a three-mana guy. He's got power equal to the number of creatures you control. Nobody ever plays him. Same thing, same thing's going on with this guy. Even the boost in toughness isn't going to make him playable. So. Yeah, like even, even with... Go ahead. Even with all the Eldrazi spells and whatnot. I was going to say the Scions and such. Scions and all the like low-cost Eldrazi that we could yeah. potentially play this with. It still just doesn't add up to be enough. No, I really, I'm not yeah. a big fan. Next is Molten Nursery. The card is also pretty bad in standard. Now, in limited, maybe. Maybe, maybe, but probably not. In limited, if you're sold on the... Uh... Eldrazi strategy, like an, yeah. a low cost Eldrazi yeah, if strategy. If you're drafting the Eldrazi deck, you yeah, know? Th this helps because it's some incremental damage for you. But even then, like you're still taking that third turn to cast this instead of one of your low costed yeah, again, Eldrazi creatures. I talk about it all the time. The sacrifice of initiative <clears throat> is just too bad on something like this on a yeah. crucial turn, like turn three. So eh. it's not like Impact Tremors where you can play like you know token generating things and deal a bunch of damage like mm. that. You're going to be playing like one color spell a turn, which is not worth it. Yeah. Next up, we've got Crumble to Dust, and some people have said, you know, potential modern sideboard tech. Yeah, better than Sewing Salt, or whatever it is. Yeah, um, and that's that's okay. In Limited, it doesn't have the best... Good sideboard ability. card in Limited. Yeah, but it still has sideboard uh, potential in Limited, depending on, like, how many non-basics you see them running. We had those tap lands that were common, and they're non-basic. So if you can exile like two or three of those yeah, from their deck true. and take those uh, tricks and abilities away from them, that can be helpful. Like obviously it's man lands is the number one thing. Yeah. And the card will get better when we get the other man lands in the next set. Probably mm -hmm. a little bit better. But we're also playing you know, Haven of the Spirit Dragon. 
which will be important against some decks, you mm -hmm. know. And, and there are some other non-basics that we care about, but for the most part, Crumble to Dust is going to be, you know, sideboard tech. But it will see standard play. Ab yeah. Absolutely in sideboards, yes. <clears throat> Up next is Kozilek Sentinel, which, I, again, I like for limited. Yeah. You know, the prevailing wisdom is to sort of play two mana one threes in limited, uh, depending on what deck you've built. And this is a two mana one four with upside, so, I, you know, I'd play this in limited. Oh, yeah. Next up, we've got Nettle Drone, and I would not play this Unlimited very much. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not terrible, I guess, because it's three power for three mana, and it's a common. It's an Eldrazi, so it goes into the, like, aggro Eldrazi yeah. thing. And you can just have to get through that extra, like, couple points of damage if you're actually getting very aggressive with this and you get them down to that kind of yeah. stuff. But even then, it's so iffy, I just... It feels iffy. You know, I might play it in Limited. I might, I might do that. Um, it feels like what is the blue red thing, Geo, whatever the, its face is, but it's nowhere near as good. Yeah. That was like when you play Instant Sorcery, you untap it. And this again, you'll only untap it like once a turn. It's just not, it's not great. Although the only upside it has is that often time, oftentimes those cards have like zero power. Yeah. And this can still attack if you need it to. Yeah. So that's, I don't know, it could be okay, but I, I highly doubt it. Up next is Touch of the Void, which I actually think we'll see standard play because we have no better options. Even at sorcery speed. Even at sorcery speed, it exiles, you know, Death Misraptor and a host of other creatures yeah. that we care about exiling. So, Hangerback Walker, you know. Yeah, Hangerback Walker, Death Misraptor. Um, through, after blocking, you can still exile Siege Rhino with this. Yeah. So. Yeah, do the last three damage and exile it, you know. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of things you can do with it. I don't mind Touch of the Void. It can go to the face in a pinch, so... Because we don't have Lightning Strike anymore, Searing Spear, Stoke the Flames, any of that, it's yeah. just gonna, this is the, one of the better burn options we're, we have. So it may see some play. After that, we've got Vestige of Emrakoil, and I thought I was going to be really happy to read this card originally, because I thought maybe Emrakoil comes back now. <laughs> no, no Emrakoil, not yet. But that's okay, that's okay. We don't really need Emrakoil. <laughs> not yet. He might be in the next one, we'll see. Uh, I, but I, the card's not great. Yeah, as far as this card goes... I wish his power and toughness were Switched. swapped. Yeah, if with the trample, were, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, if they were, it's red, four through trample, great. Splashable, you know, all that, but as is, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. Oh my god, is that all? Yes. Wow. That is all of the red, ladies and gentlemen. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. That was very, very fast. If you can't tell, our attitude is that red is a fine limited color with hardly any standard playability whatsoever. Yeah, we got two, maybe three cards. Yeah, three cards. I mean, we got... Well, Dragon Master Outcast, there's the plus three plus seven first strike thing. And there's, you know, maybe the people spell. play the burn spell. You know, there's a couple of things. And I'm sure that we've missed something in this analysis. But at the same time, or at least in what we think is good. Yeah. Know, I'm sure that we're missing something. But I just, I'm not too inspired by red. I'm really mm -hmm. not. I feel like... Oh, well, Radiant Flames. That's it. Radiant Flames. Maybe that's it. Yeah, Radiant Flames is really good. That's fine for the three color decks, you know. So there is some playability in the set, just not too high on it overall. You yeah, know? not so. We've been playing Mono Red forever. Mono Red has won two Pro Tours in a row, so they had to knock it down a peg. My name is Dev from SBMTG. And I'm Tony. If you enjoyed the content, do us a favor. Like, share, comment. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe. All of that helps us, and it makes us feel good, too. So, right. you know, it makes us feel really good. We do a lot of work on this channel, and we like to feel good about it. So, do all those things, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, my wizards.